Hello and welcome to this Spring MVC and Webflow training course. My name is Richard Chesterwood. I'm from the Virtual Pair Programmers. I'm your trainer for this course. The aim of the course is to get you to the point where you're able to use Spring MVC on live projects. You will need some previous experience before attempting this course. You will need to be familiar with the Java programming language. As on our previous courses, you'll need to be able to create classes, create objects and use all of the basic Java concepts. You'll also need to understand at least the basic concepts of the Spring framework. You will definitely need to understand the term dependency injection and you'll need to know how to work with a Spring wiring file or the application context file. Now, if you're not familiar with Spring already, then consider our course Spring Framework Fundamentals, which covers these topics in a lot of detail. You'll also need some experience of the basic Java web concepts, such as servlets, JSP, and JSTL. And similarly, if you need to learn these topics, then consider our separate Java web development course. You don't need to be an expert in any of these three areas, but I'll be assuming that you've at least met them. We'll also be building web pages on this course, so I'll be using some basic HTML, but you certainly don't need to be an expert at that. Apart from these three topics, I'll always be explaining anything we need along the way. We call our course style Virtual Pair Programming because we've designed these courses to feel as though you are sitting alongside a programmer guiding you through how to do real work. You won't be listening to hours of lectures, you'll be actually writing code all the way through the course. At the start of the course we'll set up our web server. I'm going to use Apache Tomcat, but you can use anything you're happy with. For the development environment, I'll be using Eclipse on the videos. You can follow along or use NetBeans, IntelliJ or anything you like. Apart from the development environment, I'll give you a copy of all the software you need for the course, including Spring, Spring MVC and Apache Tomcat. In Chapter 2, we'll be giving a brief overview of MVC just in case you aren't familiar with the term. In Chapter 3, we'll then start to use Spring MVC for the first time, when we write a Spring MVC controller. In Chapter 4, we'll look at a shortcut you can take in your Spring MVC called Automatic Controller Scanning. Some projects use this, some don't, but you'll definitely need to understand it. In Chapter 5, the fundamental tasks of passing parameters and accessing sessions is covered in detail. And in Chapter 6, we'll look at how to handle forms. Chapter 7 will be the first of two chapters covering validation. In this one, we'll be looking at manual validation. And Chapter 8 will cover the so-called declarative validation, otherwise known as JSR 303. In Chapter 9, we'll see how to plug in alternatives to JSP, such as PDF documents and Excel spreadsheets. In 10, we'll learn all about view resolvers, and we'll see the benefit they'll have to your code. In Chapter 11, we look at how Spring supports Ajax. Well, this is so simple in Spring that there won't be much to say, so I will also go through what Ajax is, in case you're new to it. In Chapter 12, we switch to the related topic of Webflow. Webflow can be thought of as an add-on to Spring MVC, and it enables us to handle web applications that have complex flows. Configuring Webflow is a bit tricky, so we handle that in this chapter. Then, in Chapter 13, we expand our Webflow knowledge by looking at a more complex flow. We'll see how we can create a complex flow 
without writing any Java code. Webflow is such a big chapter that we'll need another chapter, chapter 14, to reach a good standard. You'll be uncovering the mysteries of Flash Scope. In chapter 15, we'll show you where to go next. Although we fully aim to get you to a professional standard, Spring MVC and Webflow are enormous topics. We can't cover everything, but with the advice in Chapter 15, you'll be able to pick up the other topics as and when you need them. The course is going to take around 8 hours, but I imagine you'll probably only want to handle a single session in a day, so I think around a week would be a good completion time. So, I hope you enjoy the course. Rejoin me in Chapter 2 when we configure Tomcat and we chat about the concept of MVC or Model View Controller. I'll see you soon.